Hello and um, welcome here on Monday again. I'm Simon Williamson. I'm here from Avagoic Designs and I'm going to be doing some card demonstrations here on the How to Craft Network for you to for you all out there today. So thanks for joining me. I can see through the comments that it's a bit rainy out there as well where you live. It is here unfortunately, but it, hopefully the summer will be here soon anyway. So thanks for that anyway. If you haven't already, I would suggest um, just um, giving us a, a tick on the actual notifications and you'll get any updates that you need to be kept informed of. Um, but apart from that, um, let's get on with this first demonstration. So the first one I've got today is quite a big card. It's a bit different for me as well. So hope you'll like this one. I thought we'd have a go at a, a box card, a pop-up one. I'll just tilt that a little bit. You'll see it's three-dimensional. And it's a really good size and it'll also fold flat. You can actually post it, look, which is brilliant. A bit different, a bit colourful, really easy to make though. I'm going to show you how to make this. So let me just move this out of the way and then we'll get started. So the first thing I've done, and I've already pre-done these bits just to make it a little bit faster, but I'm going to show you what measurements I use. I'm just bringing this scoreboard. So I've got a piece of card, a strip that's four inches long. So it's four inches across here. And all I did is scored it at six and eight inch and then left a little bit to put some tape runner on. And I've done two of those exactly the same. Okay, let's get them stuck together. Brought my pokey tool as well. This me and red liner tape don't always get on. And here's a top tip. If you're ever trying to line pieces up, use your scoreboard, but you can push the card up against one edge. And then you can use the other edge to make sure it's going to line up perfectly. So there we go. Stick that down. And I'm just going to take this red liner tape off. Turn it over. Push up against the edge. Exactly the same. And on that way, you're always going to get a really good even fold and it's going to work for you. Okay. So now we need to put in like a centre divide and this is what we're going to use to glue his sticks onto for his Polaroid pictures. So I've already done this the same measurement and I put some red line tape on each end. Just take that off. So I'll just check the measurement so I can tell you. This is six inch across. I want to put this in. The best way I do this is just by eye really. Do one side, level it with the other side. And then give it a push down, make sure it falls flat. If you can see that on the downward camera there, I've got like a little ledge here and I've got the back and I've got the front. So I've got my three layers to my card there going on. So I'm going to put that to one side for a second. And then I've cu cut out ahead of time three circles. Uh, black, silver, and black. I've cut out a silver rectangle that's just slightly larger. If I lay this down, it's a bit easy to see. It's just a little bit larger than the, the width, but it's the same depth as my card. And then I've cut out a black strip that's going to cross the silver there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a stencil onto this, give it a little bit of texture. I'm going to use the um, swirl one. I'm going to just change it around that way, actually, because it's a little bit thicker on these edges when we're doing it. Just move that around. And I also wanted a little bit of a shimmer for this. I'm using some of the um, Thirsty Brush Confetti Ink. This one's called Moon Dust. And it's really nice. It's got a, a really high pigment in there. So you'll see that it comes out really well. And all I'm going to do is use a sponge. I'm going to very slightly just wet the end of it and dab off the excess. I'm just going to use that into this paint. I don't want it to be too wet. I almost want it to be semi-dry. I'm just going to work that in. It should be fine. I'm going to keep that in the center. I'm just going to just sponge through with those little circles. And you could do this with um, like 
wire embossing powder or you could heat emboss it as well but i just wanted some kind of focal point and this really draws your attention to the camera lens in the center we'll do that we'll just take that off that's fine just move it out of the way i'm just going to give that a quick blast with a heat gun just to make sure that's all dried I ever really miss the show once again. Oh, you didn't miss it, Margaret. We're always here for you. And it's always available on the um, YouTube Catch Up In Tip, which is good. Um, some really good inspiration on there across all the brands from Stamps By Me, uh, Pretty Penny, Himala, and Thirsty Brush. Um, they're always available for you. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to centre this where I want it on the card. Uh, and just for speed, I'm going to use a tape runner for this bit. We'll just turn this over. And put that down the centre of my card stock. I'm going to go there. Push that down. And then I've got my paper trimmer. I'm just going to take them ends off to make it level. It comes together really fast, as I promise you. And if you're doing a few at a time, you could um, do quite a few in one evening. I'll just move them out of the way. So we've got as the front of us cameras. You can see it like draws your attention to that centre circle now, and that iridescent um, paint, the what's it called now? I forgot. Moon dust. The moon dust got a real nice shimmer to it on that black card stop. So I'm just going to take these um, corners off with my corner cropper. Just to make it a little bit more rounded. Ooh, stopped it. And then we're going to stick this onto our base that we've made. So let me just lay this bit down. I just want to put glue on the big panel. Don't stick it onto the side bit. We'll put some tape runner on there. I'm also going to put a little bit of wet glue as well. Just to make sure it grabs it for us. And I'm just going to go flat against one edge. Making sure that the overhang is equal on both sides. Give that a good push down. And then we've got our camera base. You can see that. It's freestanding. This camera's in position. And now what we need to do is build up the lens of the camera. So quite simply on this one, I've got the black and the silver. I'm going to mat that one straight on top of there. What's that say? Was that your cincher there, Simon? What did I do? Well, I don't know what I did, Elizabeth. That one's there. And then on this one, I want my sentiment. So I'm going to be going for the dinosaur one. Uh, which is raw, means I love you in dinosaur. Nice big sentiment. And I've chosen a circle that's going to fit perfectly within. So let me get my stamping platform out. Oh, squiggle in the glue. No, but that could be a new thing now. I could start doing my signature in glue, couldn't I, Elizabeth? <laughs> and when I'm doing it, though, I always have to make it even. I can't, like, I have to go around edges and make a square and then do a cross in the middle or make sure there's an even amount. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm just going to quickly wipe that with the anti-static bag. Put that back on. Enter that up. Well, they're strong magnets these, but they're good. Pick that up. I've got my embossing ink pad. Give that a good push down. And I'm happy with that. 
So let's take this out. That under there a second. I'm going to use some um, wow embossing powder. This is the opaque bright white. Uh, just because it really fetches it out on this um, this design. Just to make sure that's well covered. That little tap so i've only got the bits that i want i'm just going to put my embossing powder back in its container i lose so much embossing powder at home so i get a bit giddy and then blow it over with a heat gun and then trying to be a bit more careful lately save money okay so we're going to heat emboss this now Turn it around so I don't burn my fingers. And that's done. And we'll just give that a second just to cool down. I've done that before where I've put my um, hand straight into heated embossing. And it's a bit hot, in it? <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to just get some of my sticky pads to give it this a bit of a height. Turn that over. is on about the hay tying in i don't like ironing either i've got to be, a, be honest so i'm going to put this into the center of this silver circle give it a bit of height i'm happy with that and i'm going to put some more pads on the back of this that back in. I'm going to push it down flat so I can see where I'm going to be putting it. And I want this in the centre of this design. So I reckon it's about there. I just can I'm happy with that and give that a good push down. And then for the little flash bit, all I've done is I've cut like a little bit of black card and I've mirrored it in silver. So it's not a hard thing to cut. And it's easy to add it on than to try and cut it out of the initial piece and all you do then is put that where you want that to be positioned i'm going to go for it there and there we go now we've got this camera you can see on that raw means i love you it's really good uh it's really effective and from this this design you can do whatever design you want to coming out of it so you can see it falls flat completely for posting nice easy shape let's put that to one side and now we're going to make his little polaroid sticks that come out of the top so i'm going to be using one of um, tony's dice from the stamps by me collection called perfectly polaroid i believe uh, and it's got like a big three polaroid version in there and what i'm going to be doing is die cutting so we're just using the bottom one so when we use this we're just going to use this bottom aperture and i'm going to chop the two off at the top okay let's get them cut out Make sure the bit I want's on the actual card. And then we'll just pop that through. Thanks, Elizabeth. I don't think you'll get proper pictures out of it though, but it does look good, doesn't it? With a bit of card, you could also make this look like a big cassette, which would look nice. So you could put like little music quotes coming out with your favorite characters. side so i've got the bottom of that polaroid i'm just going to trim that bit so it's level so we've got a nice polaroid shape there we've got this nice little insert that's going to go inside there and we've got this back bit there so 
So what we're going to do while, before we do the insert is we're going to get this glue in so it's got a bit more strength. So for this part, I've just cut some acetate strips, quite a, a narrow one really, and I've just folded it in half to give it a bit more strength. And what I'm going to do then is just put a little bit of red liner tape. It's hard for you to see on this glass mat, isn't it? But I'm just going to reinforce it where the join is, uh, where the fold is, sorry. Also, I want to put a little bit more at the bottom. I find whenever I do these cards, it's worth doing this. It stops them flopping and bending too much. Just take that double-sided off. Both ends. Start from the, the creased area that you bend. I'm just going to push that, make sure it's flat to the part, and stick it onto both. And by doing that, then, we've got a reinforced kind of wobbler. It's got a lot more strength to it, so it's going to hold its shape for us. Okay, I'm going to bring in my glue. Try and get some out of this. There we go. I'm going to put our stick onto this glue. This glue is amazing, by the way. I think, I think um, Tony sells this in a shop. It's called Tombow. But it really does stick anything and it grabs really fast. It's so sticky, which is exactly what you want. I'm going to put some more glue on the back of this Polaroid put out now. A fine line around the edge to make sure it catches. I'm going to stick that on top of there, trap the stick in between it. And I'm just going to leave that to set while I do my insert, and then we'll trim that down afterwards. So move that to one side. Just move the camera that way a little bit. Right, so I'm going to bring my stamping platform back. I needed one of our friendly um, dinosaur characters for this. So I'm going to have our little flying dinosaur coming at an angle there. Let's get my ink pad. I'm not bothered that it's not fully in because I think the funniest photos you get are the ones with people's heads chopped off and the bodies hanging out the frame. Push down. There we go. Get rid of that under there. And I've just brought in, just for speed really, the little um, fan pan that we sell at Stamps By Me, just to give it some bold colours. Let's go. Just get some really bright green on this background. And you could spend more time doing this if you wish. So when I get some of that bold colour on there, and then round this other side. And round our little friendly dinosaur, take it right to them edges. I always forget that little bit of green and it's under its chin. I'm going to change colour now. Just wipe my brush a second. Let's go for like a, a lilac -y purple. And just take that up there. Round its arms. I'm just going to use this darker purple just for the actual wings. Put 
little bit more onto his feet. There we go. Happy with that. Just wipe my brush off. Move them out of the way. I'm going to give this a quick blast with a heat gun just to make sure it's completely set as well. So Amanda says she just got in from work and she's just a little bit late. Don't worry. Get yourself a cup of tea and sit down. I'm just going to just relax that card a bit so it doesn't spring. I'm going to use some more of the Tombow glue. I'm going to put a little bit of glue. I think I need some more new glue, actually. Here we go. Just make sure we've got enough in there to grab our little character. We'll put him back into his, his aperture roll. Give that a good press down. And now we've done that, and I know that glue's grabbed, I'm just going to trim now around this Polaroid. So just and there you go, look, we've got his little Polaroid on a stick. And ahead of time, what I've done is I made a selection of his friends look. So all exactly the same method. So you don't have to, you don't have to see me do all five today, but you can see it's really easy to achieve. So I'm just going to put a little bit of red liner tame on the bottom, ready for when we stick these in. I'm going to put this one on the back of this one. And then the last thing we're going to need is a sentiment. What I've already done is cut out a love sentiment. And then we can use the exact same kind of method that we've been doing. Onto there. Just quickly reinforce this acetate strip. I'm going to put this. It's a slight angle going across this way. A little bit more glue on top. Make sure we get that trapped. There we go. So we've got all our parts now. We need to assemble as cards. Let me just move some of this out of the way so it's not as messy for you all. Anna says, sorry, I'm not commenting, but I'm watching. That's good. I want to get things that you want to have a go at and watch. Okay, so I'm going to position these where I want them. So I'm going to start off with the one that we've just made. I'm going to put this one at the back. And I always prefer to lay them down as we're doing these. And then we can see where they're going to be. And then we can put the next one over there. And we'll stick this one over at this side. See, it's coming together now, isn't it? And then we can, we're going to put that one there.
Um, let's put this one just there, I think. Make sure that's done. I'm just going to slightly trim that acetate because it's just sticking out a little bit. We don't want it to affect. There we go. And the last thing to put in is a sentiment. And I've done this one at an angle, so it kind of holds the acetate strips on the actual word, but it also hides it more. So if we can, we want this around there. We can decide where we're going to put that. I think I might actually bring this forward a little bit this time. Nope. Nope. Sorry about this. We're making Nathan work for his money today, Anna. There we go. If I stand that up. Let's twist that around. Where's that? And there we go. That's our pop up box card coming from a can with our little Polaroids. Got a sentiment in the middle of love. It's got the big sentiment on the camera lens. And what I do like about this idea is that if you want to make this at home, you could put your own little photos in here, like memories. So you could do like um, somebody's like 18th birthday, and you could put different photos from different, like I mean, ages. You can also write your little sentiments on the Polaroid basis. So I hope you enjoyed that one. That was as hard to make for today, but I still think you could have a go at that. It wasn't too hard, and you can always watch this video back for that one. Um, I'm going to show you some now inspiration from the farmyard collection, which is what the next demonstration is going to be from. So I will see you in two seconds. And welcome back. Well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed that last demo. I can see in the comments that a lot of people did. So hopefully that's something that you could have a go at, if you know what I mean. So that's brilliant, isn't it? Right. Here's our next um, demonstration then. So this one's a really simple card, but it's called, um, I forgot what it's called, <laughs> a Dutch, Dutch fold card. Dutch, yeah. Anyway, it's Dutch. <laughs> that's all I need to know. So you can see it's like, it looks like a long card, but actually what happens is the bottom bit all opens up your sentiment area. So it's got like a small panel that holds it. And it just means that it's, you can get a bit more scene to it, which is brilliant. And it's a really simple card to make, so let's get going on this one. So I'm just going to take my card blank. In fact, just, just a second, I'm just going to... I can see this green paint everywhere, so let me just... That's better, got a little bit. I've got my card blank. I'm going to do first of all is going to map the inside. 
So I've brought some green card that I've already pre-cut, so it's going to fit within that panel. So let's get that into place first of all. Oh, can you imagine life without tape runners? Make it all easier. I'm going to put that into place. I'm happy with that. Now on the front of the card, what I need to do is chop a portion out. Okay, so I'm going to, actually, I might use my uh, scissors for this, just because I realise that this isn't long enough. <laughs> we can get around this, don't worry, let me just grab my scissors. So I'm going to cut a section here at the bottom, so uh, around there, we can always make it shorter later, but I think this will be fine. I'm going to take this one. I'm just going to trim down this edge. That's a learning curve, isn't it? Bring the bigger trimmer. <laughs> just pull that bit out. So we don't need this panel. We can save that for another project. You can see here now I've got a nice panel at the bottom there. Okay. And what I've done already is I've cut a panel the same width as the backing mat layer. I'm going to stick it on the bottom now so it looks like it's seamless to the other part. Let's get some tape runner on that. And I'll level it up with those. And I'm just going to trim this level with the top of this white card. So you can see now, we've got us kind of fold put in place. But when it folds flat, it almost like it looks like a continuous card front now. So I'm going to put that to one side now, so we don't need that for this next part. I'm going to bring my stamping platform back up. And I'm going to be using the, the big um, background farmyard die, the ones with all the hills in it. So you can see that it's a really big one, this one. Sorry, it's a bit dirty, but it's well used. Um, but I think it's going to work really well for this. So I'm just going to put that into there, put the magnets on. I'm going to position this where I want it, so I might want the sun to one side or the other. And this one I'm going to go practically in the centre. It will go about there, look. I'll just use that other magnet to hold that in place. Give that a good push down. I'm just going to use my Versifying Black Ink. I think you all get your favourite inks, don't you, that you use? Give that a really good ink in so we get all that detail. And a good push down and because it's textured cardstock you probably want to go twice anyway just to make sure you've picked up all that detail just a little bit more and i'm happy with that I'm just going to take that piece of cardstock out. I'm just going to bring in another piece I've got, which is the lower part. I'm going to stamp this. I want the hills on this bit. So because I went um, towards the left for the top half, I'm going to move it towards the right for the bottom half. And that way I'll just give a little bit more contrast. So let's pop that down there.
Let's pick up that stamp. I love the detail in this though. And it's good, isn't it, for us crafters when there's more detail in the stamps. It means that we've got less work to do. And I'm happy with that, so let's take that out. And then pull that off for a second. Right then, so we've got the top of this card, we've got the bottom of this card. I'm going to bring back in the watercolours now. And we're just going to give a bit of colour to this. Bring my paper towel up. Got somewhere to wipe my brush then. Now, I'm just going to give... It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just going to give it a quick brush with some water to help it absorb those colours. And then we're going to pick up some some nice bright colours. We'll get that colour down first. And if we need to go back in later to give a bit more detail, we can do. I think we'll do this hill up here. It's away from this area, so you'll not see it's the same colour. I've got a, kind of an olivey green, so we'll do the bushes in this. Mix a little bit of yellow into that. Like I say, you don't have to be exact. We're just trying to give the illusion that there's loads of green fields going into the distance. If you want to give a bit more detail, you can always go back in. And just add some more lines for those furrows in the field. That's the bottom bit done. And we're going to quickly go to the other bit now. I'm going to do the same again. We're going to put loads of water on this so it absorbs a little bit faster. Nice green, bold areas. We can go in again, like I say, for closer detail if we need to. The rocks and so those paints look fabulous. Um, they were from Samps by Me, so I'm not sure if they're still in stock. Um, I'll have to have a look on the website so we can find them for you. But they were, they were really good. And it also comes with like a water brush as well, so um, you could just take them on the go. It's what you want really, isn't it? A bit of convenience. Just mix in a slightly different shade of green, and then we can go into this bigger field. A bit more water in that, I think. So it builds up really fast. And you really don't need to do more detail than that because your characters are going to bring your card to life in a minute. I'm just going to wipe off my brush as best as I can with this. Just um, just laying some water on this sky. Slightly creamy water, but <laughs> we'll go with it. Okay, and I'm going to bring in a little bit of blue. 
Just swing that round. It's a bit easier to me to get to then. There you go. Look. I'm just going to drag that across. I don't want it to be too bold, but I do like that bit of blue in there. I can use the water to make it tone it down a little bit almost. Around them clouds. Just drag it into areas of the sun. And then we'll finish off with a yellow sun. So nice and bold. And just bring some of that orange in. Okay, I'm happy with that. Just bring these paints out of the way. There is a palette on the Stamps Me website under paints. Yeah, to be honest with you, they've got some really nice ranges on the website. So I think that's the best thing, though, isn't it? Is finding a palette that works for you. Sometimes you want a really large one with loads of colours. Sometimes you want something really fast. That would be an ideal gift for like, the kids, really, wouldn't it? Okay, so this is going to go into the top half now. So I'm going to trim this just across here because I want to put a sentiment strip in afterwards. Now it's the right size. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep that bush at the bottom. That's that bit. And this bit. Might just have to take a little bit more off this um, door that I've done. You'll see why in a second. It's just I didn't want this to be visible. I want these um, hills to look seamless. If I put that on now, fine. So it's above there. It's level with that one, that's perfect. So I'm going to do now is just trim these hills so that I'm using the top line. It's a really easy shape to follow as well, isn't it? So, so that's that bit. And I'm just going to quickly heat gun these because I can see there's some wet, wet areas still. Just dab that bit so it just helps it dry a bit faster. Car insurance. It always interferes with crafting, doesn't it? I've got to say. <laughs> so I'll just give that a little bit of a flex, but it's still drying. I don't want it to bow on us. I'm just going to put some tape run on the back. I'm going to put this on the top half of the card. Just make sure that levels up really nicely. Give that a good push down. I have to excuse a little bit of yellow in the horizon. We'll just pretend that's the glow of the sun. Just, just going to get a wet wipe. I think that's where I'm picking the yellow up from. There we go. And then we're going to go back to the front of the card, close this over. And I'm going to put this onto the front. And you can see it looks like an extra hill now. So it's going to actually extend that scene. So I'm going to put some tape runner onto this bit. It's so tempted to the hills, but then when you stick it, it sticks your card shut. I'm going to do that, level it up at that side. Give that a good push down. I like that. Now we need like a little strip to go here. So I've already 
kind of made a strip, but it's just a little bit fat. So I'm just going to take a slither off that. Just turn this around for my benefit. I think that should be a better shape. Yep. Yeah. And then we're going to put that. Make a little mark. And it's going to be the same width as the um, image that we've just watercolored then. That's a nice little panel there. So I'm going to bring in my stamping platform again. And while we've got it out, we might as well do all the stamping that we need to do. We've got the crazy cow and the little chicken. And then I'm going to put my sentiment on this little strip. We've got, you are amusing. Let's pick them up. Let's get my black ink pad. We might as well stamp them all at once. One of the benefits of the stamping platform, though, isn't it, that oops, it says it's fell off. Let me just, um, we'll go back under that one in a second. We'll just get them into place. We'll go again, just because it's textured on that watercolour cardstock. I'm going to make sure it picks up all the detail. I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to pull that out before I get any inky marks on it. And I'm just going to take the cow off. And we'll try this um, chicken again. They are, aren't they, Margaret? They're really cute. I love their expressions as well. It's, um, and they're so versatile. There we go. I'm happy with that. We'll just take that out. And just bring the watercolour back in. You don't need a lot for this, but obviously the cow's black and white. Well, mine is today anyway. So this was a bit of pink, I think. And we'll do is nose or her nose. I always think his nose looks like a frog's head. I've got to say, it just reminds me of a little frog's head when I see it. And then we'll do the others. Let's go in with the yellow. Do a nice little yellow bell. Let's pick up a little bit of this purple. See, that's fine. And we can just do a little bit of tone on the hoof work. And that's enough of that. And then we'll do our little chicken. We'll give him bright red hair. And feathers. Nice yellow beak. Little yellow beak. It's a little bit orange into that. 
we're gonna put it a yellow whip out there. There we go. I'm just gonna just blast them with a the heat gun. What's it? It really doesn't like a frog's head. It does, doesn't it? I keep, every time I see it, I'm like, it's a frog's head. <laughs> There we go. And then I've got my die plates. I've got the cow one, and I've got the little chicken one. Let's get some masking tape, don't it to slip. Put that into position. There we go. And we'll just put that through the cutter. So it's not been too technical, has it? It's just been a, just a good way of extending your image on your card to make it a lot deeper, give you a bit more scenic value. You could also do a triple fold on this. You could have three layers if you wish. But I just like the two for this demo. Just pull our little cow out. Our little chicken. Move that out of the way. Just make sure my hands are as clean as possible. We'll put some tape runner on the back of our sentiment panel. We'll stick that in place. Now bring in the foam pads again. So this one can be having a, a walk on the um, this bottom field. And this little fella missed it on that field as well look. and there you go that's our barnfold card it gives a little bit more depth and it gives you like a head hidden sentiment panel and it's just a really good way because there's there's no limit to how how much you extend those fields by so if you wanted to start them higher you could just do a scene with lots of the animals in this case from the farm collection I just think it's a really clever way of putting a, a sentiment hidden in there. So, I hope you've enjoyed those anyway. Let's bring that other one in that we did earlier. That's our two demonstrations that we did today. So we've got the pop-up camera with all the little Polaroids going on in there, which is, it's really cool actually, I love that. It's something I'd like to receive. And then we've got the barnyard card, which is just like the little panel that flops open. But hopefully there's something there that you could have a go at yourself. Uh, I know we do. If you do have a go, post a picture on the page. It'd be really nice to see what you do come up with. Um, I'm going to say a walk in the last. No. A lot of words come out, Elizabeth, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know sometimes what they are. Um, Margaret, if you were sending this card, do you use fake pens or do you use glue also? Uh, if it was for, if I was making this for somebody, I would probably use glue, but just because of this demonstration, the tape pen's a little bit um, faster to show you. Um, I do find if you're going to glue watercolour stock, um, you need to then put something heavy on top of it so it keeps it flat, or else it starts to like bow itself a little bit if it's too wet the glue. Um, but yeah, um, it's what you prefer, but I would do that. I would personally use a mixture of both and make sure that the glue's actually on there as well. So if one fails, you've got the other. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed those. Thanks for joining me this um, Monday and we'll see you next time.